Alright guys, we're going to go over some armbar defense today. So, let's talk about some basic defense from the armbar when he is in the full lock position. So say if you want to put an armbar on me from um, side control. Here, just move your leg a little, just for now. And he's attacking the armbar. Okay. So whenever they're attacking the armbar, of course, there's the basic defense to get the arm on the inside and do the rear naked choke here. Okay. This is the most common one that everyone uses. It's very efficient at holding the position, but it's not good for escaping the position. Because one thing we don't want to do is just sit here holding the collar or holding the rear naked choke and not, they're not actually able to finish us but we're not able to escape either, okay? So this is a good thing to do if they slap it on really fast and you just have to hold for a second. So you rear naked choke your arms and control like this. And he just has his leg not on my head so I can actually speak to the camera. But we're here and we rear naked choke and then we go underneath his leg here to control. So we get this locked tight position. Now this is good but a lot of people are really good at attacking this and they start pushing the elbow with their hand and they start, uh, yeah, if they push the elbow, sometimes they can kick it with their feet or start to set up bicep slicer, so it is still dangerous. So one thing I like to do is I start with this position here and I transition into uh, more defenses as he progresses the arm bar. So for instance, if I have the, the grip here and say he brings his leg over the top and starts to put your heel in my arm and start kicking it. So let's say he breaks the grip by kicking it, okay? So when this happens, we can grab to your gable grip here. This isn't gable grip. I don't know what this is called. S grip. S grip. This is S grip. This is a gable grip. S grip here is the most common one. Gable grip's not as effective because you can just hook underneath or push it with your fingers or do anything. Yeah, if he hooks, so this S grip is a little better because he's not able to break that grip with just his hand like that. So now we're in our second layer of defense. We're controlling here with our S grip. He's still trying to kick our leg, but if he starts kicking me with both feet now, then we're really in trouble, okay? So most people think that this is the end at that point. They just try and do the hitchhiker escape, right? Where they turn and escape like that. I don't really like doing that one. I feel like it's really risky. So what I like to do is instead of going this way, I like to go this way, okay? So as he kicks the grip to break the grip here, I'm gonna bring my right leg up and catch behind my knee, okay? Now this is a really good grip because it, my calf pinches down on my thigh here. And when I pinch down my thigh, it creates a really strong hold and I just curl my fingers over my, ham, my hamstring here and I pinch my legs and then I triangle my legs, okay? So now from here, what happens is he starts to have to fall to this side to try and finish the arm bar, okay? And that releases pressure on my shoulder and I'm in a position where he's not grinding my forearm anymore. Because if I'm here controlling with the rear naked choke grip, a lot of times he digs his forearm in, he starts grinding, pulling really hard, it's just annoying. So when we get to this grip, it is kind of the last stop, the end of the road, but from here we can actually work some escapes. So when I'm here, it's very hard for him to finish, okay? So now my goal is to not worry about this so much anymore, but actually try and start escaping the legs. Because our goal is to escape the armbar, not just defend it. So when he, I finally get to this third defense here, and he's trying to attack, he's distracted with finish the, finishing the armbar, I'm gonna grab his bottom ankle, the ankle furthest from me, okay? When I go to reach for this ankle here, I'm just gonna push it up and then catch it between my legs. You don't even have to squeeze tight because it, it's, it doesn't matter. I'm not holding it like a tight, deep half guard or anything. I just catch it under my leg and he's not going to be able to pull it out easily. Like if he tries to pull your leg out, go ahead and try to pull your leg out. It just doesn't work. I'm just holding it in a position that's comfortable. So now this is where it gets interesting. So if I dig my head in the inside and start to turn up, I'll grab a collar here and I'll pull myself to him. Okay. The danger with this is he's kind of on my back. Right, he doesn't have the seatbelt grip. If I'm fast, I can still escape. If I hold this arm, maybe, and I come up on top. So that's a really solid escape there. I'm in this position. Here, catch. The arm control. I catch the ankle. I push it here, and I grab this ankle and I dig my head in. Grab the collar. Start to turn in. Okay, that's one option we have from there. But. Sometimes that doesn't work because I'm in this position like this and I try and dig my head in and he keeps covering my face and I'm not able to get my head in or maybe both legs are on the inside and I can't dig my head through, okay? When that happens, we're gonna switch back to the rear naked choke style but without my left hand. So I'm here and I'm gonna bring my leg as close as I can to his leg, here. And then instead of being underneath my leg, I'm just gonna switch my hand to his leg, okay? And you'll notice I don't go from here to do it, because look at all the space, as my, the space is there, he's gonna arm bar me. So I bring my hand close, and then do a quick switch to the inside. Now once I'm here, it's very hard for him to finish. Even if he extends his legs and is yanking really hard, it's gonna be difficult. So when this happens, we use our momentum to sit up. Here, once we sit up, 
start driving into him, and then we can just pull our arm out really easily. Okay? One more time. So go ahead, go to mount on me, and then just attack the arm bar on this side. This so one's here. He attacks the arm bar, and immediately goes to the rear naked choke defense. Okay? Now from here, he breaks the grip, and I'm trying to get to my S grip. Okay? If I have an S grip, I need to now be aware that I need to start shooting for the grip underneath my knee. When I feel like he's going to start to break the grip again, I go to my knee. So that's three different, uh, three different defenses there. Okay. Now we're going to our third line of defense here, and as he's attacking that and he's distracted, I grab the ankle, push it up, and catch under my leg. Now from here we're in a much better position. We take away a lot of his leverage, and he's not nearly as uh, effective at finishing the armbar here. I first now grab the ankle and try and bring my head in, then grab the collar. If that's not working, I bring my knee to his knee. See how I pinch my legs together? And I switch under his arm, under his leg here with my arm. Then I can let go of this leg and just start to sit up and put pressure like this. Keeping my grip behind the leg the whole time. Keeping a tight hugging grip here. You can even use this position here to end into a leg drag, okay? Which is always useful. So those are a good arm bar escape sequence. So let's go through the whole thing fast. Not too fast though. Great naked choke. He starts to break my rear naked choke grip. I go to my S grip. He breaks my S grip. I go to my L grip, we'll call it the leg grip. Then I go to the ankle here. Try and come up. Say he puts the leg back over my head. I come back down, bring my knee to it. Pass my hand through. Push this leg up and drive into him. Once I drive into him, I'm putting adequate pressure, stacking him, pull my arm out, drag him into the leg drag. It's my personal favorite armbar defense sequence.